Um, 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 here we go. I'm saving this demo from earlier. First, I'm going to go over some outdoor lighting, which seems a little weird, and just stay with me. Um, I apologize because I realize these scenes are kind of indoors. I get that, but we're just going to kind of parlay that into in interior lighting as well. So our interior lighting right now just con is like two point lights, right? For my uh, candlelight, and these can be nice and warm. So this is what I mean about um, never using pure white. What question? Question. Discord and your Twitch. Oh no! Oh no! No no no! Bad. Discord and your Twitch. Oh no! Just mute him. Got it. Fixed. It should be fixed now. Is that better, guys? Sorry about that. I hope that's better. I can hear you, but I just muted myself on Discord, so that should fix the problem, I hope. And it looks like I am on streaming on uh, Twitch. So I'll go back to the demo, and I don't know, if somebody could unmute themselves just to say that you can hear me fine, that would be cool. Or chat or something. I don't know. Everything okay? Can you hear me? Yes? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay. Cool. So again, remember, visibility turns your camera, <laughs> sorry, your lights on and off. So if you select the lamp, you select the visibility on, that's one with a binary switch. One is on, zero is off, right? So that's my overhead lamp. Overhead lamp is very boring. It's, 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 it's not maybe the best lighting scheme. Maybe you don't want your candles on. Again, select your point lights, hit zero for visibility. And when you turn your lights off completely, you should just have pure black. Remember, four is wireframe. Don't forget, five is shaded. Six, by the way, brings up your textured view. And then seven, oh, by the way, my grape leaves are textured, as you can see here. And then seven um, brings up my lighting, which is black because no lights are on. When I turn on a light again, then you should start to see lighting appear in the viewport. That's one candlelight. Let there be light, and there was one candlelight. So... Uh, you have to decide what is the main source of light in the scene. If it's the candlelight, then maybe that's your only source of light. Um, that is that is an option. You can totally do that. But I'm here to tell you that not only is that boring, but black backgrounds are generally forbidden, verboten, bad. Try to avoid this whenever possible. And I just mean pure black. Try to avoid pure black. That means pure black shadows. You should generally try to avoid. So if I were to render this right now, and check this cool trick out. I can draw a box around like half of the screen, for example, so that if I were to draw a box around half of the screen, it would only render that half by using render region. That's your second icon up here. First, first icon, the slate, this is gonna render the whole thing. But let's just try testing with render region on just to show, sort of show you how this works. So, the render region is very important because it allows you to render just a small region and so you can tweak things like lighting, you can tweak things like color, and you don't have to always re-render the whole damn thing every time. So rendering with a region is your friend, always use it. But also always try to render from the render camera. So already right off the bat, this is clearly not rendering from the render camera. That's a problem. You can click the escape button a few times to escape out of your render, be aware that you should save your project first because sometimes that might crash Maya. But escape, escape. Come on, come on, don't just escape. Of course, I say that and probably it's gonna, it's gonna crash. But usually if you tap the escape button a few times, usually, there we go. Now it stopped the render. And hopefully it didn't crash your scene. I'm rendering from the wrong camera. This I don't is very. Know if you know, but you're also streaming on Discord. That might be why you're having oh. problems. Oh. Damn it! I thought I fixed that already. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. 
I almost want to start the stream over again, but that's okay. I'm going to keep going. And that, that is probably causing some problems. So back to where I was, this icon here, slate with the eyeball, that'll open up your render window. I can clearly see I'm rendering from the wrong camera. It's not a big deal. In your render window, with the render dropdown, here I can definitely just simply select render camera, and I know at this point I'm rendering from the render cam. Your render cam should be locked down, by the way. Your render cam should not be moving. Your render cam, uh, once you find a nice dynamic angle, then you shouldn't be moving it. So this is just the two point lights in the scene and nothing else. And you're probably saying, what about the outdoor lighting you kept talking about? Well, I'm going to get to that in a minute. This is, again, just two point lights. First, before I go over that, I want to talk about how the render window works a little bit. A lot of people want to go right for the interactive renderer, and that's fine, but I'm old school. I like this guy because it doesn't crash, and that's kind of important to me. This icon here looks like a mountain with a sun or something. It's a picture icon. That's keep image. Click that. That's going to store this image. This is important because now if I turn the lamp on to compare the difference, turn the lamp on. I can draw a box, we'll say, well, around however much you want. Click the second icon to render region. This is now going to render both the point light for the candle as well as the overhead lamp, which again, may be boring in terms of your lighting scheme. Uh, but I want to just show you again how the renderer is meant to work, because now that I've stored the previous image and I have a new image, you might notice I have a slider down at the bottom. So if I want to compare between the two, I can just slide and it will compare all of the renders that I have saved. Before, after, before, after, before, after, right? And so if I wanted to say change the color of the lamp to something a little bit more ridiculous, maybe a little bit more saturated, or let's, let's go with blue, for example. Same thing, right? I could say save image, use render region, and it can be enter any box, by the way. It doesn't have to be any region. Draw a box. Click the second icon here. Box around the slate. This is your render region. Now, I'm showing this to you because it's kind of foolproof. And when I say foolproof, I mean it doesn't really break very often. It will occasionally break, but it's pretty rock solid because it's, it's, relative, it's old technology, but it's been around since Maya was invented. We have a newer way to render. And again, look, see, I can compare. I'm starting, I actually kind of like this interplay of warm and cool light. So what I've done here is I have warm light for the point lights and I have cool light for the lamp. And this, you know, I like a little bit better. Like I keep saying, you can render whatever region you want and this should save you a lot of time versus always having to re-render the whole thing. Um, and you can also re-render regions with different materials but we haven't gotten the surface development yet so like i said just simply concentrate on lighting right now and maybe what color your lights should be never use the default intensity of one never use the default color of white which isn't really a color really at all it's more of a value but point is is that you should color your lights a little bit so they're not just default white default intensity one and if you have a warm versus cool light source, you usually have more interesting results. Right? And if you just have like only point lights for your candles, this is terrible. You can see you can't really see very much and you have a black background. Okay, got to keep moving forward. So again, store the image. Let's do something a little different. Let's hide the candle light by hitting H for hide. That should turn off the light. We'll even hide the lamp light. Again, H for hide. Five goes to shaded view. We'll go to our perspective, and now we'll start working. That's just our render view. So let's pretend we're doing an outdoor scene just temporarily, just really quick. In our rendering shelf, our second light, they look like a bunch of arrows. I want to concentrate on this. This first light, which looks like a sun, ignore it. Pretend it's not there. It's evil, bad, bad, bad. Just don't touch it. It's an old ambient light that's been around since my version one or two or something. It's physically inaccurate. 
I mean, you might use it maybe for some sales or product design, possibly, maybe, but it's physically inaccurate and generally not the best light to use, and I have a much better solution. So just ignore this and concentrate on this guy. This is gonna be what we call a directional light. A directional light is a very old light, much like a spotlight, meaning that they've been around a while. Um, why do we wanna use a directional light? Well, it's the sun or moon, that's why. So directional light is always going to be your sun or moon. doesn't matter if it's in Maya, Max, or Blender, or, oh my god, even Unity, or Unreal. T for target. You guys might remember from the other day, T is going to make a target node. And you can either aim with a target node. Remember, V is vertex snapping, so that's kind of a cool way to do stuff. Or, you know, move the light around the target, and that makes sense. Seven turns on what? Lighting mode, because four was wireframe, five is shaded, six is texture view, and seven is lighting. And you can actually see as I move the directional light around the scene with the target or interest locked, it's not really locked, but here's the difference. If I hit T for target, I can move the target around. If I hit Q for select, the target's gone, but I can still rotate the light. So here's what I want you to understand. The directional light is all about rotation. It's all about direction. You can actually see the arrows that indicate the direction it's pointing in. And why is it like a sun? Seems counterintuitive because the ambient light has a sun icon. Just ignore that because it's really old, like 20 plus years old. So just ignore it. Um, this is what you want to concentrate on for your sun. Even though it doesn't look like a sun. Just trust me on this. When the sun is directly overhead, the directional light, same thing as the sun, should be pointing kind of straight down, like this. So this would be the equivalent of noon, and actually noon would be almost pure white light, believe it or not. Uh, not exactly, but you know, we like to have just like off-white oftentimes, we don't like to have pure white, we've talked about this, really like write it down whatever you need to do to remember that pure white is bad. Just we want to ignore it. So any kind of off white is always better than pure white, but this is not like we're not we're not in first grade coloring our our sun's yellow. It's not quite like that, even though I know it's very yellow here. Point is is with the sun directly overhead, and by the way the intensity slider should also work. Now let's see what we get for a render. This would be the equivalent of maybe um, what? Maybe noon. So we've gone from indoors, soft candlelight, to what? To like noon. What does that look like? We can use a render region. Directional light directly overhead. Oh my god, it's super yellow. It's super saturated. I've gone way too far with this. This looks terrible. I don't know if you guys can see the, the render progress, but it's way, way crazy, right? Way overboard way too saturated. This is too much color. Let's put it, let's put the value here. First of all, we're on hue saturation value. Let's switch this to RGB because, oh my god, what just happened, right? Like, everything is crazy. We just want off-white. And again, we can use our render region. There's no reason to render the whole thing unless you're going to post it on your blog or you're going to turn it in for an assignment. Wow, I'm still getting like super saturated yellow for some reason. We don't want a yellow sun, that's a little too yellow. Turn off coloring management. It's a little odd that that would be giving me so much weird saturated color. Um, so render region as much as possible until you're happy with the region that you're rendering. And then render the whole, still giving me an overabundance of yellow. I'm just going to like make this over again. Not sure why. Just do it over. It's fine. I don't care. There you go. Back to pure white. And you're probably saying, well, pure white, you're breaking your own rule. You're right, I am. I know. I said no default intensity of one. I did say that. And no, I don't want pure white. And I know... I'm really serious about that. At sun, excuse me, at noon, your sun is probably closest to pure white light, 
but you shouldn't have something that's overly saturated orange or yellow any more than you should have pure white. Um, there we go. That's better. Oh, yeah, much better. Um, now, has anybody here ever used Kelvin by any chance or Kelvin charts? Or has any, anybody ever heard of a Kelvin chart at all? Um, we actually didn't go over this in the first class, but I'll let you in on a little secret. If you want the best lighting possible, then... Kelvin, like the temperature? Correct. So your Kelvin is your color temperature, right? So if we want the best colors possible, we can look up a Kelvin chart and believe it or not, we can type that into Maya. That's like a new feature. So, well, relatively new. I should, I, I've been using Maya since version 2. So for me, a new feature is like in the last 10 years. Um, but you no, might note that this intensity and color is kind of arbitrary. Like I'm just like under color. I'm just picking some color that is like off-white, kind of warm outside color, whatever. Uh, but it's not really accurate. If we open up Arnold... I actually have a checkbox that says, hey, look at that, use color temperature. And there's my Kelvin right there. And wait, it gets crazier. You can go now and just type in Kelvin chart and find the Kelvin chart that actually has sunlight mentioned, like over here, for example. So sun direct at noon would be anywhere between 5,000 and 5,400. Not that hard, really. So as long as I have anything between 5,000 and 50, we'll say 5,400. Okay, sure. Enter. And make sure you have this checkbox on. Then it ignores this color and actually uses the proper color temperature. And hey, now we're getting like scientifically accurate stuff. It's, it's science. So by turning on the color temperature checkbox, we can actually use the correct Kelvin number for sunlight. Pretty cool stuff. Nobody's impressed. Fine. Keep your image up here. You can, of course, slide through your progress if, just in case you want to see what your renders are doing. As long as you remember to click that icon up here, then you can always slide through the renders you've already created. Tech, like Check your progress kind of thing. Anyway, you should feel special. I didn't go over Kelvin with the first class, so ha. Huh. Even better, better tips and tricks. Okay, so that's great for sun, but we have these pure black shadows that look like crap, personally. I think they're terrible. I don't like pure black shadows any more than I like a pure black background. We should try to avoid both things. By the way, you can scale your directional light. If it helps you see it, that won't change anything about the light. And say if you wanted something closer to sunset, then I could move this more to a horizontal angle. I've got the target still on here. You don't have to use the target if you feel more comfortable with just hitting Q and then rotating. You could do that. I don't. It's up to you. But then what's our color for sunset? We could just guess at it and make something kind of orange. Or we could go back to our Kelvin chart and we could look up sun at... Let's see, through, through clouds and haze, it's going to be like 6,500 overcast. Where? Oh, here we go. Sun at sunset, anywhere between 2,000 and 3,000 Kelvin. Let's say 3,000. That's nice orange color. I like that. And then we go back, check out our render region. Or if we want to, we can, of course, render the whole thing. I don't know. Leave that up to you. And now I'm getting something that should be sunset outside. Hopefully. Nice orange color because my Kelvin is 3000. So I'm getting an orange color for the sunset. And more importantly, the sun is at a horizontal or the directional light is pointing horizontally. And so you should see that the shadows are really long. So it looks like I'm having, you know, uh, this meal outside at sunset and I have these very nice long shadows. So this is going to be like your sunset lighting, which is working pretty well for me. But um, I've still got kind of black shadows, which doesn't really make sense. Again, you can store your image up here. And again, you can kind of 
zip through your renders just to compare before and after. So black shadows are bad, black backgrounds are bad. What do we do about it? Well, if you go outside on a sunny day and you look at your shadow, it's not going to be pure black. The reason for this is because your shadow actually will get the bounce light and the ambient light and the fill light from the sky. So if you don't have any sky light in your scene, keyword being sky light, then your shadows are going to be pure black. So what, we're, what we need now is we have a sun in the scene. This is my sun. We, what we need now, we need a sky, right? So if you guess sky dome or skylight, you would be right. And in the Arnold shelf, one, two, three, the fourth light is your sky dome. This by default is going to be white. We'll call it sky. By the way, just to be very clear about this and something else, I don't know if I was clear enough in the first video, but the sun is going to be your key light for outdoors. The sky is going to be your fill light for outdoors, meaning that the main source of light should still be your sun, followed by the sky. And we don't want pure white light for our sky dome, typically or almost never. Again, pure white bad, intensity of one bad. You can always play with this if you want. But what are we going to do for our sky dome? This is where it gets interesting. We're going to plug in a sky. In fact, we're going to plug in an image of a sky. And this is where I recommend you go. Go to a place called HDRI Haven. HDRIHaven.com. Um, HDRI stands for High Dynamic Rain Imagery. There's a giant library of these things here. So we click on HDRIs. And then we can go to skies and we can pick a sky that, that matches our mood or matches the time of day or matches our environment or whatever it is we're going for. So if we click on this, for example, if you're lucky, you'll get a background plate, which unfortunately, I think in this case, this guy doesn't have a background plate, which is sad and unfortunate. It's kind of weird. These look like... You should try, anyways, to try to pick one with a background plate. It's not absolutely necessary, but like this guy does have a background plate. And how I know is if I scroll down at the bottom, I have these images available to me to use as backgrounds. I should state at this point that you're probably saying, what the hell, man? Um, my candlelit dinner with a fruit bowl has nothing to do with the sunset and the mountains. And you're right. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Hey, look, it's R2. In the, in the sunset, mountain, valley, whatever. Point is, is that maybe you're making a picnic. Maybe you're having a picnic. And maybe you're on a um, picnic in the Grand Canyon. Then this might make a lot more sense. I guess what I'm saying is nobody's... You, you don't have to make this a, a restaurant. You don't have to make this a room inside if you don't want to. Next, we download our HDR. I recommend using 2K. Download the HDR I file. I've actually already done this. So I'm going to switch to Maya. Again, this is the background plate. We go back to Maya. We go to our Sky Dome where we have color. It's right here. We go to our option box, click this, and then we want to go to file. And this is where the other class was like, hey, can you screenshot that, please? So I will for you guys because they wanted it. So I assume you probably want it too, guessing. So then here we go. I guess in general chat, maybe. Oh, I still need to get back to paint effects. So HDR, Sky Dome. Anyway, there's the settings that you need. Well, it's not even settings. It's just how to, to feed in file from here. Point it to the HDR that you've downloaded. Note that it should say .hdr on the end, and it's like a 6 meg file. Looks like this. Bam. And look, now I have the HDR file mapped to the sphere. And you can actually zoom out enough. You can see there's my sky dome. There's my sphere. Now this is where it gets interesting, because you can actually kind of see that um, the the sun is over here, whereas my directional light is on the opposite side. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So my sun is actually in the wrong place. 
like very obviously on the opposite side of where it is here. So we could try and re-aim the directional light, but actually, you know, it's easier just to select the sky dome and rotate it. I think it's easier anyway. Oh, when you do this, hold down shift to make sure that it's rotating. Oh, no, 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 not clone. My God. I just want to make sure that it's rotating along this axis, which is what? It's the Z axis. So just make sure that you're not accidentally rotating around other axes. I mean, not to say that you can't maybe a little bit, but what I'm trying to match is, yeah, I'm trying to match the angle of the sun here, kind of with where it's coming from here. Cool. I think that looks pretty good. And I can't tell unless I turn off the sun. Remember, H will hide it. And by turning off the sun, now I can render with just the sky dome and not the sun. And let's see what we get. So this is the sun as it is right now. It's very orange-ish. But save it if you haven't already. I mean, save the image here. Then we can render, again, not always the whole image. We can use render region. Now we can just render with just the sky and see what the sky looks like. This is using the color from that HDRI image. And you can see, wow, it's super pink and purple because that's the color of the sky. And so at this point, I'd like to ask you guys if you have any questions. This should be your fill light. So believe it or not, this should actually be very dim compared to your key light or sunlight. So to me, this looks pretty bright. In other words, the light that's coming from the sky and from the sky dome is really pretty damn bright in this case. And I feel like maybe my key light or my sun might be a little too orange. If we go back to the Kelvin chart, and we go back to where we see our sunrise or sunset, it's telling me 2,000 to 3,000. And if it's outdoors, it's like looking like this. We could try more like 6,000 to 7,500. Or we could even sample the color because that's really pink. Holy crap, that's pink. So under the sun, if I turn it back on, visibility on, everything's so blown out. Control A goes to my attributes. Do I want it to be this color or, you know, something something I don't know if I can color pick this no I can't so then what maybe sun through clouds haze would be 6,000 6,500 slide this up that looks closer to what I want I mean I don't know how warm you want your your sunset to be like that's close to 5,000 Anyway, this is going to give you a little bit more physically accurate colors. I think that I'm getting way too much light from my sky because my intensity, oh God, my intensity is at one. That's why. Let's, it's okay to turn your sky dome way down, like 0.5, for example. That's like only 50%, I suppose you could say. Of a, Intensity of one is kind of 100% sometimes. So turn down your sky dome because you want most of the light to be coming from your sun. This is where you want most of the light coming from. Now let's see what we get. This is before. Again, save the image. Use your render region. I don't care. Whatever you want your render region to be. This should save on some time. So outdoor lighting, yay. And again, you might be wondering, well, what does this have anything to do with what I'm doing right now with my indoor lighting? And I'm going to say, well, you can build a wall with a window in it. You can shoot your directional light, for example, through a window. That would make things a lot more interesting. But note now that my shadows are not pure black. And I'm getting something with, that, to me anyway, looks much, much closer to proper sunset lighting for this sort of dramatic, warm um, effect that I'm going for. I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I think I'm making some improvements from here, which looks blown out and doesn't actually have any sunlight to here.
which this doesn't this looks about right. Um, and again, if you wanted it to be closer to nighttime, then you could turn down the amount of light coming from your sky dome or your fill light, and then you could tweak your directional light until uh, that again is your sun. So you could tweak the direction of the sun or the orientation or rotation to control the shadows. And of course you can control the color of the sun for also the time of day. And how do you know what time of day it is? Check your Kelvin chart. Does that make sense to you guys? Can somebody say something? So weird streaming because it's like I feel like I'm talking to myself and I have no feedback. It's very awkward as a teacher. Um, I am impressed. Well, thank you. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so anyway, there are only 16 of you. What? <laughs> Say again. Say again. I'm sorry. Repeat yourself. Sorry, I think it cut off. Um, I was going to say, um, that pretty much makes sense to me. Okay. So this is like the old school way of doing it. It's still, I think, the best way. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I, I still think this is the best way to do, to make outdoor lighting explicitly because at this point, you could use any HDR eye you want for that time of day and for that environment. And um, I don't want to get too ahead of myself but a really nice reason to use this technique, and I'm going to jump the gun a little bit, so I'm, I'm going to apologize right now for jumping the gun. But I really want to show you the power of HDR, HDR lighting, or your Sky Dome does so much work for you. If you have a reflective material that is physically accurate, so we'll go to Arnold, we'll go to Shader, and we'll select the AI standard surface. Don't worry, I will end up repeating this a lot. So don't worry if you don't get this because I'll just be repeating this throughout the term. But like say I want glass, I'll name this material glass, I'll change my preset to, yeah, you guessed it, glass preset, and now I have glass as a physically accurate material. I select my wine glass, and again, I'm gonna repeat this a lot, so don't don't worry, you got the video, and I'll just keep repeating it. I'm used to it, it's fine. So we select the glass. We can either middle click and drag the material onto it, or I can actually right click and say assign material to selection. Now I have a glass, um, wine glass, right? Say I want this to be gold, copper, silver, I don't know, something metal. S repeat that process. I go to my Arnold, shader, AI standard surface, boom. Then what do we got this? This is going to be gold, we'll say. Copper, does anybody care? I don't know. Let's say gold. I know that's a preset. So I just go to gold and I replace it. And what's kind of cool too, by the way, is if you want to blend these presets, we can go to preset and blend the stuff 50-50. So if I wanted like half gold and half copper, I could even say replace 50-50 or 75-50 or 25. So 25% copper, 75% gold, whatever, whatever. Whatever, whatever you want, it's up to you. So now I'll shift or I'll select my gold candlestick and I'll right click on the material and add them. And you're probably thinking, what the hell? You just said not to worry about materials and yet here you are doing material stuff. You're right, I'm jumping the gun. This is a sneak preview. Imagine we're gonna do that <laughs> in a couple weeks or a week or whatever. But I'm doing that because I really want you to see why this is so powerful. Watch this. Now, I use render region around the things that I've changed. So I use render region around, draw a little box, right? Just around the stuff that I've changed. I use render region. And now, you can really see the power of HDR or the power of a sky dome with an HDR plugged into it. Why? Why is it such a big deal? Well, not only do you get the lighting from that HDR image, but you actually use it as a reflection as well. So as you can see now, if I zoom in, what do I have? I have accurate reflections on my glass, accurate reflections on my metal, and this is why we love our HDR. Yeah, everybody? Questions? Yeah, you got it.
No, 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 no. Go away. What are you doing? Just go away. All right. Sorry. Some kind of an alarm there. I don't know what's up with that. So this is where we're going. This is a sneak preview. We're going to pretend that, um, well, we don't worry about that yet because before we get to surface development, I know, I know it sucks, but we got to get our, our lighting mastered. So please don't worry about surfaces or materials until our lighting looks the way we want. So I'm going to go back to my rendering shelf. I think it's the one, two, three, fourth. This, this Lambert material is the default Maya material. And now we're back to default. I know, I know, it was exciting there for a minute. But no, we got to go back to our default materials because we need to light our scene before we think about surface development, before we think about um, what's gold, what's wood, what's glass, what's whatever. We can't think about that until our lights look good. And then once we have our lighting, once we nail our lighting, again with the default material and it's like why 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 can't i just jump to to plastic or wood or glass or metal or whatever and the answer is very very simply if you can make your lighting look great with the worst material in maya then you can imagine it's going to look a million times better when we start adding physically accurate materials i hope that makes sense i know it's frustrating but yeah we got to take baby steps first so this is outdoor lighting um you know save your scene uh, here's another way to do it. And again, I'm giving you guys pearls of wisdom that I did not give to the first class. So I hope you're, you're happy about that. Um, if I delete my cool outdoor lights that I just made, and again, remember, I, I guess you can hide in this case, but sometimes you can hide lights and that'll be safe. Like I can hide the spotlight or I can hide the point lights. I do find that hiding your skylight is generally well, let's just say that for what I'm about to do, it's better to delete it. To delete it, don't hide it in this case. Again, main source of light is your sun, that's your key light. Secondary source of light is your sky, that's your fill light. Normally we could hide these, but let's just delete them for now. Um, what I'm going to give you in terms of knowledge that the other class didn't get is in your Arnold shelf, this is your sky dome, right? But look, we also have the last light on the shelf is a physical sun and sky which creates both a sky dome and a directional light kind of built into it um, this for me is a relatively new thing but you might note that there's a enable sun right here there's even a slider for sun size and sudden tint and intensity and so on so now if we open up our Let's look at the difference. This is the one that I created from scratch or old school, old fashioned way. Still the way I prefer doing it, but I just want to show you the difference. This is another way to do it. You can use Arnold to kind of procedurally generate or, or just sort of automatically generate your sun and sky. That's another way of doing it. I personally don't like this method as much, personally, but it is another approach. And one of the reasons I don't like this method it's not very intuitive because I don't know for time of day how to change this necessarily to 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock p.m. It's not intuitive. This is one of those few examples or few instances, I guess, where I would say that 3D Studio Max is a, is a lot more intuitive than Maya for this. Because actually it's elevation and azimuth <laughs> Because that's how, instead of saying 3 p.m., I'm going to check my azimuth and th thanks, thanks so much, guys. That's, that's so intuitive, really. I, I really appreciate that math <laughs> that I need to do for the time of day. I just want to type in, like, 6 p.m. and get that lighting. So why I have to do this is, is absurd. doesn't make any damn sense to me. But, you know, let's just do it and see what happens. So yes, you can use the AI physical sun and sky. And yes, that's the last light on the shelf. And yes, it creates a sun and sky for you. But rather than you having the control over rotating your sky dome that has an HDR attached to it and rotating your directional light, which is indeed your sun, you get to fight with azimuth and elevation, which to me doesn't like easily translate into time of day. But it does, meaning that 
if you were to look up the math, then sure enough, you can look up the azimuth and elevation, and you can see here, this is actually looking pretty nice. Like I would say, considering that this is all com completely procedurally done, that is to say done with, you know, um, math, then if you know the correct azimuth and elevation, then yes, that will translate to time of day. It's just obnoxious, in my opinion. Why? Why did you do it that way? Even 3D Studio Max, at least, lets you um, pick a place on the globe, Los Angeles, a date and a time, and yes, generates that lighting perfectly accurately. So I have no idea why Maya would just say, nah, we'll do elevation and azimuth. Seriously? You guys, you're killing me on that. All right, I'm going to stop the bitch session, but I want you guys to see the difference in the two different lighting techniques. You can either use your procedurally generated sun and sky, which is this, and then <laughs> fight with this stuff, the azimuth and elevation, and maybe intensity and sky tint, and this will give you accurate lighting, but it's all completely driven by this. Or my preferred method, which is this one, is to go ahead and put in your own sky dome, which is the fourth icon on this shelf, put in your own HDR, which gives you really amazing control over what sky you want to use or what atmosphere you want to use. You can even rotate it, get different reflections, get different shadows, etc. And then just add your sun with a directional light. That, to me, is just simply easier than fighting with the attribute editor in the AI physical sky and playing with Again, elevation and azimuth. I'll let you choose. You guys can decide. Pick your poison. It's up to you. Remember, you can always use render region. That's the second icon here. Somebody's talking. Somebody's chatting. Azimuth. Yeah, that's exactly my point, azimuth. Right. That's my whole point. Nobody thinks about azimuth. Nobody thinks about um, necessarily... What is the other one? Elevation. Like, I just want time of day, you know, or perhaps longitude and latitude or something like that. But I feel like this is where um, uh, Maya compared to Max is a, is a little bit more frustrating because although technically this should work, and here, I'm going to blow your mind right now. Hopefully Maya doesn't crash. Here we go, guys. Strap in your seatbelts. Let's have some fun. So instead of using this old school window, which is still great, by the way, and it's pretty bulletproof, it doesn't crash very easily, and I really recommend using it to render, we're going we're gonna to jump to 2020, and we're going to use on the Arnold shelf this play button. This is our interactive renderer, and this is where we get to hope that stuff doesn't just crash immediately. Because it is an interactive renderer, it means it's rendering all the time. I want to switch the camera from the perspective to the render camera shape node. That's right here. This means now I'm rendering from my render camera. And now here's where we can change the time of day interactively. And yeah, this requires a fairly fast computer. You might notice a progress bar. You might notice it's interactively changing. Here comes the fun stuff. Try changing your azimuth slider now. And as you change the azimuth slider, this will update on the fly, meaning as an interactive renderer, as a real-time renderer, any kind of changes I make here, oh god, it hurts, it's painful, damn, <laughs> this is kind of what I meant about having a fat, relatively fast computer, it works so much better in the labs. Because <laughs> the computers in the labs are oh, uh, very powerful and expensive. But what you should be able to do here, if I haven't crashed Maya, I feel like it's giving me a, a warning, like, hey, you're, you're pushing a little hard here. But, um, oof, it's, it's, it's crashing, maybe? I don't know. Let me look at, while I'm letting this work, if I haven't already crashed it, I'll look at azimuth. Yes, I know I, I'm saying azimuth is really weird and it's a strange way to calculate. <sighs> okay, fine. Arnold mm, azimuth Maya, whatever. I hate to have to Google stuff. Let me Google that for you. Um, 
the idea again is that you're changing here it is physical so sky Arnold for Maya and so again you're changing the time of day by adjusting the azimuth which is not intuitive I repeat compared to say just typing in a location and a time of day here's your answer azimuth goes this way elevation goes this way so if you know the proper elevation and azimuth then you get your time of day I don't know why on earth they wouldn't just simply allow you to type in the time of day and the location on planet earth and get that because that's how you do it in max and it makes a lot more sense but hey you know we'll just go ahead with azimuth and elevation for time of day it's annoying right so like let's let's see here this this gives you a rough idea right there's your elevation of, of your sun and your azimuth it's rotation in this case but this may help you there's even sun size and there's even haze so you have a couple different options when creating outdoor lighting you can totally use this what they call the AI physical sky and sun or you can go with the old way that I just taught you, which I feel like you have more control. Reflections always work. Always, 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 as long as you're using either, a, well, if you're using a sky dome or this is the physical sun and sky, either one will always work as long as, you're, as you use physically accurate materials, which we're gonna get to more. Hey, there's my renderer, looks nice, right? Okay, Maya seems to be working again. So watch again how this works. Um, as I change the eleva elevation in azimuth, this is elevation is how high in the sky the sun is. So if I lower my elevation, sun is going lower. Uh, now the renderer starts again. It's interactive renderer. It's creeping along because my computer, although fairly fast, is is still not fast enough really to use this interactive renderer very effectively so i mean this is cool when it works well but given that it's taking so long i'll probably just switch back to the old renderer which again is up here versus the new renderer down here anyway um it kind of makes sense to use the word because you might be using it to create an environment with similar lighting as it would with as it would be at certain times without it being used to emulate that time. Oh God, I think my little laptop would, would take off into space if I tried interactive rendering. Yeah, that's why I try to teach you both because interactive rendering is great if you have a fast computer. If you are like me and my computer, well, is not as fast as the one we have in the lab. It's still an i7. It'll do it. It's just taking its time. So, yikes, yeah, interactive renderer may be a little too dangerous, perhaps a little too much. Come on, stop. Okay, up here, hopefully you guys can see me, there's a play and pause button. It's, it's right here, so if you need to play and pause your render, there's a stop, IPR, and stop. See, so that might help you. There's your stop and start for your interactive renderer. So at an azimuth of 19 and an elevation of 15, this really looks like very accurate sunset. All right, but note that this was something I got through playing with the elevation in azimuth. And this is still physically accurate, but it's not going to give me that really nice, pretty reflections because there's no sky dome with an HDR in it. Instead, we have a sky that's literally a gradient, and that's all I'm going to get. So if I were to put the gold back on here or the glass back on here, it would be very, very boring. So although we can definitely make outdoor lighting this way, it's a lot more boring and offers less control, in my opinion, than doing it the first way that I taught you. If you recall, the first way I taught you was to set up a sky dome. That's the fourth one here. Put in your HDR in the sky dome and then use a directional light for the sun. That again gives you more control in my opinion. This is just my opinion. This is still physically accurate lighting. This is still 
perfect lighting. Actually, you can tell the contact shadows are perfect. You can see that the sky still turns the shadows a little bit blue, so your shadows aren't purely black. This is physically accurate. This is perfect lighting for this azimuth of 19, elevation of 15. Just don't ask me what time it is. I don't know. It looks like sunset to me, though. All right. Have we had enough of the interactive renderer? Because, man, it's, it's slow. So I'm going to kill that. We can open up the old renderer again with a slate and eyeball. That should open up your old renderer. We can kind of compare the difference. Okay. So that's, again, just a different way of doing things. I prefer, instead of using the AI Sky Dome, I still enjoy putting in my own Sky Dome, putting in my own HDR. Again, this gives me the opportunity to add any sky I want, any HDR I want rotate it as you can see here grab it rotate it rotating it again will kind of reposition what direction the lighting is coming from is it possible to like paint your own hdri or like background thingy or how hard would that be no it's super easy actually you can paint your own hdr just when you save it out of Photoshop, you have to save it as a 32-bit radiance file, which is, what, which is what HDR is. So in case you're wondering how to make an HDR file in Photoshop, you can totally do that. So, geez, uh, oh geez, oh geez. Like if I open up an HDR file, this is the HDR file I'm using right now. How do I know this is HDR? How do I know this is dynamic range? Down here at the bottom left-hand corner in Photoshop, I open up this triangle. This triangle allows me to switch to 32-bit exposure. And now I have a slider, which actually shows me the range of my HDR, which is really cool. So this is that high dynamic range that we're after. And this is why this is different from a standard image. A standard image doesn't have this because a standard image is not 32-bit exposure. So that's how we can test it, if it's true HDR. If we want to save this as an HDR file, and yes, you can save a painting as an HDR file, absolutely. In fact, you want to? You want to? It won't give us the same amount of data. But I mean, theoretically, we could take any image. Oh my god. Uh, I'm going to open up a random image in Photoshop right now. You can force it to be 32-bit, like you were saying, uh, you know, paint your own 32-bit. I don't know, the Sphinx cat head for some reason. I feel like doing it. If I were to go to image mode, save this as a, or change this to a 32-bit channel. Now it's 32-bit versus 8. Then I go to save as, and I save this as an HDR file. That's gonna be under radiance. Radiance is HDR, so it's sphinx.hdr. This is like a hack, it's a workaround, but it works. You were asking about painting or making custom HDRs. That's how you do it. Now I go back to my sky dome, I go to color. Now I feed in the new sphinx HDR. I know this is silly, but there's my sphinx HDR. I can rotate this however I want. And weirdly, believe it or not, it's actually lighting my scene with that image. And I can now play with the intensity. So watch what happens by playing with the intensity here. You're going to see that the Sphinx cat gets brighter, or more to the point, the lighting in the scene. Watch, watch the lighting in the scene, see, changes by turning the HDR intensity up and down. And now, quite literally, I'm lighting my scene with that Sphinx cat at 32-bit exposure as HDR. Now, technically, um, this is not giving us the same quality of lighting as we would get from an HDR file from HDRI Haven. And the reason being, the reason for that, is we're trying to hack this, meaning that we're trying to force more data. So it's like, the HDR file, the HDR files already have that that range or that raw data inside of it. That Sphinx image is just a JPEG, so logically the JPEG isn't going to have that dynamic range. 
So it is a hack. It's kind of a workaround, but it does work. So if you wanted to make custom HDRs, you could basically make sure that you're painting whatever it is you're painting at 32-bit exposure. Again, that's here in mode. Go to image mode, 32-bit. And then save it as a radiance file. And that's how you can paint your own HDR and light your scene with your own HDR painting. Does that answer your question? Does that answer your question? Yeah, that answers my question. Thanks. Okay, cool. So, okay. Um, wow, we have so much to, to do. Do you guys want me to continue talking about lighting? Or would you like me to jump back to paint effects to review paint effects? Or, or what? What would you like at this point? Does anybody... Which way? Just stick with the lighting? Or review of paint effects? What do you guys... Feel like right now what 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 would you like lighting paint effects well this is gonna um, but I mean if there's more lighting stuff to talk about then I would like to continue with that personally um, mm -hmm. it looks like a lot of people are interested in looking more at paint effects too <laughs> both so, Seems like both. I think I have time for both, so I'll just try and do both really quick. So, oh god, don't crash on me. Usually if you tap escape enough times, <laughs> you'll, you'll, or close the rendering window, maybe. Stop. All right, finally. So, really, really quick, I'll hit five for shaded view, and I'll review paint effects super fast because it should be pretty easy. Hit F for fit on the wine glass. I'm going to add a rose to the wine glass. I know it's cheese ball, but it's just a quick way that I can demonstrate paint effects. Also, I don't want anybody to have glasses that are razor sharp. I hit the three button. It's going to cut me because of how sharp that glass ridge is. You know, don't forget to add edge loops. Mesh tool. Insert edge loop. At least three edge loops or more in some cases. So if I slide an edge loop on the outside of the glass, and I slide the edge loop on the inside of the glass. That gives me like four. Now when I hit the three button, you're going to see that I have a much better wine glass. So please hit the three button always. If you need to hit F8 for object mode. <laughs> Sorry. Or right click object mode. Click off the object. Now you see I have a very obvious beveled lip around my wine glass. It's not going to cut me. I could do the same thing for the bottom of the glass, which would be probably for the better. Of wine glass, it's not going to cut me. I could do the same thing for the bottom of the glass, which would be probably for better. The wine glass, it's not going to cut me. I'm hearing so many echoes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... Like I said, right-click to go to object mode if you want, or F8. But see, now, with by pinching edge loops together, I have something that I think looks a little bit better. Some of you guys were complaining about this being too uh, thin or something. I feel like some people were complaining about that. But look, if you select this edge loop, F10, right, and then just select the horizontal edge loop, perhaps both of them if you want to do that, and then just scale outwards, then see you can thicken up your stem a bit. All right. Anyway, that, that was just a little touch-up on the wine glass. I think it looks a bit better now with a thicker stem and a more defined ridge on the bottom and top. What am I doing all this for? I want to make a rose in a wine glass. I know it's cheesy. I already mentioned that. Go to Generate. Go to Get Brush. This is where your paint effects brushes live, but you want to go upstream. That's this up arrow. And we have all kinds of different stuff we could choose from. We got watercolors. We got airbrush. We got glasses. Ah, we got object mesh. Wait, what's in Oh my god, there are wine glasses in here. How did those get there? Could that mean that I could put a wine glass on a wine glass? Really? Is that... That's like meta, man. Super meta. I don't know. I'm joking. We want the wine glass to be on the wine glass. I mean, we want the rose to be in the wine glass. I mean, we got to make sure this is sticky. We could use live, but that doesn't actually work with paint effects. So we go to generate and we say make paintable. 
And now, if we've done that, select the brush, it's at the bottom of your toolbar, and now my wine glass is truly on the wine glass. Ha <laughs> Amazing. No. Remember that your brush size is very sensitive here, right? So B for brush size, and now another wine glass on a wine glass. All right, I think I've exhausted this joke, but if you can't make your wine glass by revolving uh, a curve, this, this, this is a cheat. I mean, is there such thing as cheating really? Is there really? I, I, I beg to differ. Um, so where is, where is the grape? Where's, where are the grapes? The grapes are somewhere. I mean, we have all different things. Oh, we were going to do flowers, weren't we? Yeah. So flower mesh, because we want these to be a mesh. That's important. So if I grow the tulips, again, B for brush size. Oops, those are tiny tulips. Hold down B and drag, just like you would with your soft select. And you can see I'm just like growing tulips. It's kind of cool. But I want roses, so I'll click roses. And then I'll grow the roses from inside the glass. And they're tiny, so I know I want to make my brush size larger. These are tiny little roses. So B for brush size. Click and drag. Still too small. All right. So hold down B, drag. That's about the right size. And this is probably where we'd want to look for our um, photo reference. But this isn't going to render. So unfortunately, as much as I would love for this to render right now, um, if I use a little render region around this wine glass, do I have any lights on? Eh, no, not really. I could turn my old lights on. This was just like the candle light and the lamp from earlier, just so I could see something, right? Well, my lesson here is that your paint effects are never going to render unless, unless uh, I convert them to polygons, and then we're going to go back to lighting. How much time do I have? I think I have time. Sorry for the lag. So much lag all the time. Hey, uh, is it possible if I could... Uh, Sorry for the lag. Is it possible to get what? Is it possible if I could... Uh, Sorry for the uh, lag. Can I, can I get a critique? Is it possible to get what? Uh, just like a critique. Uh, I have to leave around five. Sure. Sure. Uh, last thing with this. Modify, convert, paint effects to polygons. Then I've got this group as my rows. Modify, center, pivot. I can critique you now, no problem. If you need to delete some faces out of this really quick, remember F11 for face mode. Select the face you want to delete. Brackets are undo and redo camera, but period and comma, wait a minute, shift period, yeah, shift period and comma, pretty cool trick here guys, write this one down, shift period grows your selection, shift comma shrinks your selection. So if I have one face selected, I can use shift plus period to grow up the leaf and click delete. And so in this way, I can get rid of uh, faces I don't like by again, selecting a face, using shift plus period, grow those faces, click delete. And now I don't have rose petals sticking through my wine glass, okay? Uh, this was just a review of paint effects, just to show you how they work. So if somebody wanted me to critique them, um, okay, yeah, that's fine. I can, I can definitely switch to a few minutes of critique. I feel like we've covered some outdoor lighting and we've reviewed paint effects. So if there's no questions about outdoor lighting and paint effects, uh, I can move on to a little bit of critique, but I think I'll stop the stream unless somebody wants to, or if, if somebody has questions about what I just covered, I can delete the old stroke, of course, and just, actually, you know what? Very quickly, hide the lamp. 
super fast. Hide the lamp. Add a sky dome. The sky dome is going to be white by default. There's nothing really plugged into it. I'm going to make this super fast. So then we're going to go to HDRI Haven. We could find something indoors for HDRI Haven. Um, this is actually not the preferred Autodesk workflow, but just to show you that it can be done, it still works. So if you find an indoor environment that you want to use, you could just as well use one of these HDRs, for example. Here's an artist workshop. Download the 2K HDR file. Be aware that even though this does light your scene really well by itself, you should try and still have some kind of key light, like a sun or a moon or something, which is supposed to be the main source of light. Really, all the lighting here is considered your ambient light or your fill light or your bounce light. So it shouldn't be ideally that intense. I'll go to the attributes of the sky dome. I'll go to color. I'll go to file. I'll feed in this new artist workshop HDR. Boom. I'll zoom out just because I want to see what it looks like. Come on, zoom out. So I'll zoom out and there's my artist workshop, right? Now really quick because I've had a request for critique. I only have the sky dome and my point lights on. That's it. And if you wanted to, you could probably turn down the sky dome intensity, but just to see what this looks like, I'll go ahead and render this or render region. And while this is rendering, um, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and critique. What's your name? The person who is leaving. Hello. <laughs> this is so weird. The person that wanted critique who's leaving at five o'clock. I want to look at your blog. Where is it? Hello. Can you hear me? His name is Mason. Mason. Okay, Mason. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Mason. Hopefully you see I'm getting some nice lighting here. Right? So try to light your scene for homework again. I want at least two examples of paint effects. This is homework, everybody, guys. Guys, seriously. Homework, listen. At least two examples of paint effects in your scene. Try again relighting your scene. So try again to light your scene. Again, I want a, a Arnold render, but now with at least two or more examples of paint effects. Grapes, sure, whatever. Whatever you want the paint effects to be, but add some paint effects. Think about the narrative. What's the time of day? What's the mood? How is your lighting supporting your narrative? How is your lighting supporting your mood? Give me a two sentences, maybe, telling me what the narrative is. So I want, I don't know, between two sentences, paragraph, not too much, telling me that this is a restaurant. This is a Greek restaurant at sunset. I don't know, whatever you want. This is a picnic at dawn. You decide whatever it is you want for your narrative. It's due for homework. Give me photo reference. Give me at least two examples of paint effects or more. Um, give me another render from Arnold. Take another stab at lighting your scene. You know what your homework is, so I guess I can move on to critique. Uh, Mason. I know you're leaving. So really fast. Uh, this is it. Mason? Hello? Oh, there we go. Got it. Yes. Okay, first, I don't want screenshots. I want renders. So uh, it, it's okay to have a screenshot and a render, but I need a render and a screenshot both. Uh, Rendering is more important. So this is just a screenshot. I need a render. Got it. Starting there. It's cool that you have a screenshot. I'm not saying this is bad. I'm saying what's more important, obviously, is the render. Render is everything. Screenshot just shows me, oh, you've got a spotlight here. This is useful. I know there's a spotlight here. So how could you fix this? Well, how is the spotlight a motivated light? When I say motivated, I mean what's really causing this light in your scene? Is there a lamp directly overhead? If there is, fine. But this spotlight looks like it's at a tilt. So if I was going to make a, a lamp, 
like directly overhead, then I would make sure that it was pointing straight down as opposed to being at an angle. Typically, angular light is more interesting and dynamic, but ask yourself what the story is. What's the narrative here? I see. So if the narrative is you've got a light directly overhead, you're at a restaurant, then probably the light wouldn't be at a weird angle. It would be directly overhead, I'm guessing, if that's your narrative. Um, is your candle on or off? I don't know. If your candle is on, then obviously your point light should be on. Okay? Um, okay. Uh, maybe you are sitting at a table at home and you have a window off camera. You can definitely build a wall, seriously, Build a wall, box model it with a hole in it, has a window, and shoot the directional light through the window. Really. And then that would be the effect of shooting the sun through a window. It would be the same thing. You could try that if you wanted to. Um, so ask yourself what the time of day is, what the location is, what's the mood and color. Oh, okay. You know? So that should be your homework. That's everybody's homework. Give me like between two to four sentences, like a paragraph, basically, telling me time of day, location, uh, description of the scene. I, and it's up to you, you know, as long as it includes, you know, a, a candle and a fruit bowl and a wine glass, and I'm even willing to let you be creative, meaning maybe you can use a goblet instead. Maybe you want a broken glass. I, I don't care. Oh, and by the way, everybody, Fill out the scene with at least two paint effects objects and begin filling out the scene with other things. Yes, I'm actually saying that you're allowed to download models. You can go to 3drender.com. 3drender.com, go to your lighting challenges, go to model downloads. Feel free to take, steal, borrow, uh, whatever you want to call it, these models. I know that sounds weird. But these models are available for free, so why not use them? And oh my god, could this be? Is this actually? Yes, I think it's a fruit bowl already made for you. So just go ahead and download it if you want. You know? So if you want cherries, just take the cherries. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to be upset about it. I feel like you can definitely model cherries. You should be able to model cherries. But in the interest of time, we're in our third week, right? So um, it's time to start using paint effects to generate our models and maybe even download some models too. See, really interesting lighting here. So yeah, again, these are at the lighting challenges at 3drender.com. 3drender.com, lighting challenges. Feel free to download whatever models you want as long as it supports your narrative. Whatever your narrative is, I don't know, maybe you want a Halloween narrative. That's fine. you got some sort of Halloween um, models that you can use here. Feel free. Go for it. You've got to decide what narrative you want with this fruit bowl scene. You could go with a still life if you wanted. Um, just make sure that you tell me, you know, what's the time of day? What's the mood you're going for? Um, what's the story? What's the narrative? Why, why is this interesting? Why do I want to look at, look at it? Why is the, the uh, lighting dynamic or not? Or should be, right? Um, what's the story you're trying to get across? All right. I'm going to stop the stream here. And, and um, I think we've covered quite a bit. I did say I was going to continue with lighting. Um, it's 5 o'clock just about. So I guess, Mason, you got to go. Um, we still have quite a bit of time for critique, but I want to know how you guys are feeling with all this. Should I stop the stream and jump back into critique, or do you want me to go a little farther with lighting, or what? N okay, I can stop streaming now because I feel like I've covered quite a bit. I mean, I think since this stream is uh, being recorded, I think that um, we have enough to work on relighting our scene. So I think, yeah, we can just jump into critique now. Okay, sure. 
And I'll go over more lighting later too, um, because lighting is one of my favorite things. And just the, the lesson here really is the better your lighting, the better your overall product. And so if you can nail your lighting and really make your lighting look super cool and dynamic, then that's, that's really a huge chunk of the battle. Okay, I'm, I'm going to jump off the stream now at this point, and um, we'll talk more about your, your blog posts, and I'll, I'll turn on screen sharing, so I'll stop the Twitch. I can't get over the, the OBS Inception. It's 